Hi, this is Liam from Turn Sounds. If you've run out of golf balls, just remember you can use a hard-boiled egg. Welcome to Just Keep Walking. This is a podcast related to the Walking Dead universe, not just series now. Joining us today, I feel like I've forgotten something. No, no, you're doing well. <laughs> no? Okay, cool. So, joining us today is uh, the, this random new host. That's not true. My name's Ben, uh, joined by... Uh, I'm Liam. And I'm Isaac. Yeah, we're switching things up a little bit today. <laughs> Bunch of liars. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, in all reality, obviously, you can tell that I'm Liam. Isaac's Isaac. Ben's Ben. Hello, hello. Classic. But we are, we're changing things up a little bit today. So, I'm running the show. So, for all of you listeners, enjoy the smooth sounds of my voice coming through a different microphone today. Nice. But it does sound good. Yeah. We, <laughs> Fasten we, your seat we held a vote and we just said, Ben, you, the show is really not running the way it's supposed to. <laughs> and he was usurped by Liam. You may live to regret this decision, but... <laughs> These are the cards we're dealt, and we will go full steam ahead. So today, we're going to be discussing The Walking Dead Dead City, episode 6, titled Doma Smo. Have I pronounced that correct? No idea. Oh, they're called schmores, but... <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Um, to, to keep in the spirit of the joke, what I said before is not in any way true. Ben's a wonderful host. He's oh, a little bit crooked. No, no. A little bit crooked I, voice I lost yeah. my voice over the weekend, and it's, it's mostly back. But, uh, yeah, I figured if Liam could save me having to talk that extra little bit, then that would be very helpful. So thanks for stepping in. It's what I do, baby. It's what I do on a day-in, day-out basis. This does mean, though, <laughs> you cannot hit a wall. you got to be on it for the whole... Oh... oh. Challenge accepted. Tough, tough gig. Here we go. I like and he's got some energy today. Oh yeah. <laughs> Too the much energies, apple crumble. Yep, definitely. The ice cream, all that sugar is all in my bloodstream <laughs> right now. No, I think because I have ultimate power in this seat, mm. there is this this Negan head trip going on right now. We can always host another vote, so I don't get too cocky. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, gentlemen, first thoughts of the episode, the series finale. Well, season finale, because they've just confirmed a season two. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there you go. Wow. I mean, they'd have to after that. <laughs> yeah. But, okay, so, I mean, I'll have a highlight, and we're going to try and stay positive. <laughs> and uh, I, I suppose I'm spoiling here, you know, spoilers <laughs> ahead. Uh, boring! Wow. <laughs> Unfortunately for me. Um, I, every single scene, pretty much, I was just left wanting, going, like, I wasn't at all offended by, like, the, any of the typical, um, um, what is it called? Like the usual suspects, like the, mm. you know, bad camera work or like mm. dodgy lines. Just really the way that the scenes were put together. I was kind of like, ah, oh, like I really didn't get anything out of that. It didn't lend yeah. itself well to the following scenes. And then, uh, yeah, potentially just an editing. I'm not, not an editing thing, a writing thing this time mm, around yeah. for me. But yeah, I won't be too negative, but yeah, a bit underwhelmed. Wow. Ben. Quite the opposite for me. Wow. So yeah, I quite yeah. liked it for the most part. Yeah. Pretty much up until the the cliffhanger ending, which <laughs> is exactly the same thing that derailed the first show. Yep. Yeah. But um, it, no, I was really liking it. Uh, pretty much up until the end, because it, it really felt like it was all coming together and going somewhere. And that's the only disappointment is that it's like, oh, okay, you weren't really going somewhere. <laughs> and they're yeah. just going to give us a cliffhanger. But but no, I quite enjoyed it. Wow. So I'm the tiebreaker now. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, look, unfortunately, I thought it was a snooze fest. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah, I, this was probably the first episode <laughs> out of. I don't know if it's the entire Walking Dead series we've covered, or if it's just for. The, it's definitely this season. Mm. Uh, I was looking forward to the end of it, mm. and sitting there thinking, "When will this end?" Well, this shouldn't be a surprise to either of us, Ben, because when it ended, Liam straight away went. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> Bit of a giveaway. <laughs> Couldn't hold it in. <laughs> nope. Yeah, I had to. I had to make some sort of auditory remark. I do like that about Liam. He, he, after honest. you've watched something with him, especially if you didn't enjoy it, you know straight away. Yep. I wear <laughs> my heart on my sleeve. June. <laughs> ah, bad thoughts. Mm. Bad thoughts. June. Why I'm afraid to show Liam things that I've made. Mm. <laughs> Too honest. Just gonna stand up and walk straight out as soon as the credits start rolling. Uh, Dust my hands off. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll yeah. be very courteous. I'll be very kind. I'll be cordial if you show me what you've created. I'll probably love it. <laughs> you and I are very similar in, in our tastes. I find. Hmm. Right on. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> so 
I, I like you had this uh, little snippet there where you said positives. I actually think given that two out of three didn't enjoy it, we should probably focus in on a positive. Mm. All right. Or, well, who wants to kick it off? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. You kick it off. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, well, right at the start there. So the last episode we had Ginny firing a flare into the air and then sort of uh, Negan and mm. Pearly uh, kind of <laughs> going to figure out what that's all about. And then, yeah, the whole gang sign caught it gets back together again um uh yeah right at the start Ginny hugging negan um the whole mm. thing i thought was quite sweet and um it's interesting because we talked about in a previous episode i i was defending negan saying like everything he does is like he's just a great actor we like mm. within the universe like he puts on a show he doesn't necessarily mean everything that he does he just knows how to get a particular thing out of a person by putting on the right actor's hat for that job and so we see that here when he says like i killed your dad and you know mm. i never liked you i just felt like i had to pay a debt and everything and you can tell he doesn't mean a word of it maybe he did kill her dad i don't know that probably did happen sure but this idea that he's just saying you know i don't care about you really like in any way you can tell that's tearing him up inside to say it but he mm. needs to send her away classic like throwing stones at the dog situation to get the dog to run away uh, not that I would do that. It's like it's from a book or something. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I haven't heard that one before. No, neither have I. You know, the dog's so loyal, you can say, get out of here, go, and it won't. And so in the book, like he like, oh. actually throws stones at the dog to make the dog believe oh. that he does Oh, right. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. It is heartbreaking. Anything to do with dogs. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think that that's another kind of little uh, flag uh, for what I was saying in the previous week, that yeah, I don't believe that Negan is this all-out monster who's not mm. redeemable. I think he, for the most part, is just putting on a show. Does terrible mm. things in the in the name of that act. But, you know, yeah. Sure. Mm. I like it. I like it. Yeah. I thought, yeah, that was a positive. It rang true mm. for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, f- feel free to jump back if, I, if I'm missing <laughs> anything. But, um, yeah, I quite liked the, the whole talk about Macy's and when she was talking about Sander. Kind of ironic because Herschel definitely looks like Santa and just saying her, her mum <laughs> was her like, dad. oh, I know where to find the real Santa. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, just uh, mainly because A, it was supported, especially after that, by a lot of great visuals of the city and mm. even walking down the street. So it all, it all looked pretty legit. Um, mm. But just that story and then looking down and look, oh, there's that toy shop. It made you feel like you were in New York City rather than just like, it, it, you know, it, they were pretty much for the rest of the series. It's like, oh, it'll cut to a wide shot to remind you that's where they're supposed to be. But then it's just like, oh, they're in a building that could be anywhere. But this kind of really tied it back and made you feel like the the city side of it, which I, I quite liked. Nice. If that makes sense. Yeah. I like that. Mm. Yeah. That's that nice. for me kind of is what I'm talking about as far as like that scene. Great. But then the way it lends to the next scene is very confusing. Yeah, it was kind of Cause weird. Because <laughs> she has a full vulnerable moment there where... Because we've had Negan talk about, like, it was the, the Statue of Liberty. That's, my, you know, my dad said mm. we'd go and we never went and all of that. And so she references that and s- by saying it wasn't the Statue of Liberty for me. It was mm. Macy's. And so it's like, oh, you're actually opening up and connecting. And then the next scene follows. So, yep. Yeah, true. They're trying to kill him. <laughs> Yeah, which even that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And it came out of nowhere. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, what what was the thing, aside from maybe just a look, like what set him off? <laughs> he knows too much. Yeah. yeah. But but like he, he sort of, they had a look and it was like, oh, I know you're going to try and kill me now. So, that, you know, they've got to start fight. Like what she said didn't really tip him off. Did it? Well, no. she no, sorry. He asked her what. Oh yeah, what was Ginny um, gonna? Yeah, say? Yeah, what was Ginny gonna say to you? Uh, and her response didn't. Like you could see that she was uncomfortable, or it wasn't truthful. Oh yeah, so, yeah that's he's right. like, ah, oh, something's amiss here. Because Ginny actually would have said, "Hey, I checked the grain silo and it's full." Yeah. So yeah, th- there's another. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm. That kind of also, uh, if we don't mind jumping back. Mm. Uh, Liam, would you scrub through some of this I as sure we're talking? Can. Yes, I sure can do um, that. It helps with a bit of queuing. Um, it, was, it must have either been the most frustrating thing ever or the best thing ever for Negan to be traveling along with this mute girl. Because like either he's not getting any <laughs> conversation back or he just gets to talk and talk and talk and not be interrupted. <laughs> so, hard to say. Um, 
But there was a note I made about uh, right at the start there, Liam, um, when Junie gives him a hug. Ah. Um, I thought that there was like a horrible continuity error because she gives him a hug. It's like, whoop, whoop is uh, she gives him a hug and then it cuts to a different shot of him. And I was like, she's just hugged him. How are you cutting to a shot of her not oh, hugging exactly. him? <laughs> but um, it's... There it is. I think it's the second time. That's all right. We'll let it play. Yeah, right here. You see? Because <laughs> her hair is so dark. Oh, you can right. barely see that she's there. And so for a moment, I was going to be like, <laughs> are you kidding me? Like <laughs> basic, basic editing. Like, But no, then she is still hugging him. So... <laughs> Yep. Yeah, no, I see that. <laughs> yeah, I'm almost a moment of outrage, and then I was like, "Oh, actually, yeah, my TV's just not that, <laughs> not that good." We did get another uh, CGI car, though. Mm. Oh gosh, that was terrible. <laughs> that was shocking. Although my highlight is actually the snapshot of the city directly following it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought that was a really cool shot. It did look good. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if we can quickly find it amidst. Mm. Also, the oh, um, terrible car. the the stairs they're walking up, and then that building when when he asks her that question, and they start fighting. That building looks fully yeah, like I'm yeah. sure it was mm. a proper, um, you know, abandoned <laughs> building. <laughs> That's that car. There's not even a shadow. Yeah, the light on it isn't changing yeah, at all. There's nothing. That's so shocking. Ka-chow. But wait for it. So now our trio is heading upstairs. Duo. Duo, yep. Apparently, I'm really good at English. Yep. Good spot there. That. Ah, I thought nice. this was a really cool shot. Right. Mm. Yeah, very cool. So, just see yeah, a broken down New York car going yeah. through it. So, thankfully, from a distance, the car doesn't look as bad. That could even be passable. If it weren't for the shot prior, I would yeah. have seen that and gone, oh, yeah, that's, that's decent. Fair. But, yeah, I quite liked that shot. Yeah. Ben, I'll agree with you here. Like all the cityscape shots with them walking through it. I, mm. again, have talked to death about this. Give us daytime, as yeah. much yeah. daytime as you can. Mm. It uh, it just, I know it's more difficult with making things look real because light is on everything. All those plants and stuff growing. Yeah. Oh, they, they look real, hey? Yeah. Well, they probably are. I, I don't know. <laughs> it looks legit. That's what I mean. For all our New York listeners, please confirm whether or not this is real. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you've got some shots here of like him looking over his shoulder at her and her yeah. looking super shifty and yeah. grumpy at him. Clearly, she knows something's about to go down. But yeah, I feel like the switch, like the sudden like um, something snapped inside of her and, and she had no other choice but to stab him. And he kind of does a bit of a woody, ah, when he gets stabbed. <laughs> really? I didn't hear that one. Yeah. When go, <laughs> really? We'll get, oh, it's pretty, pretty oh. decent. Yeah, we gotta pull that up when it comes Get up. Get a bit of audio there when that's happening. <laughs> uh, that even that though, that was one of my main gripes. Like, why is she trying to kill him? Don't know. I real and this is kind of where, when a scene on, like this is happening, and I know I'm supposed to care and be invested and be on the edge of my seat, and I'm feeling nothing. Mm. That's kind of a telltale sign for me of like we haven't built it up enough. Yeah. There's not enough seating into this moment. Yep. Yep. I, I mean, think the... Oh, sorry. You go. No, 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 no. Go, go, go. There had to be maybe a moment between him and Jenny where she actually somehow communicated to him Yeah. that, hey, you know, Maggie's up to no good. And then... Oh, I don't know. Something like that. Just so then it's at this moment Maggie goes, oh, he knows if either I kill him now or he's going to run away. Like, there's something like that. But it, mm. it just wasn't quite obvious what was going on Hey. No. I mean, now that we're talking about it, one thing that does spring to mind, which is weird, I'm kind of defending it, you know, maybe, you know, Herschel's whole shtick around, you know, you don't see me, you're so wrapped up in Negan, maybe it's just a case of, yeah, this is the guy that killed my husband. So the plan to get Herschel back has just sort of fallen by the wayside and all she sees is, is just Negan and I've got to get revenge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But again, like you say, Ben, it's, it's not clear and just not done well. Well, I mean, thinking back, and this kind of whole series has had the problem of, like, they've spread out so many things across episodes, but the whole show it's, uh, relies on everything you learn mm. uh, in particular nuggets throughout the episodes, like the, the grain yeah. silo we kind of had to put piece together. Yeah. But now just remembering, Maggie has been having all, like, these nightmares and flashbacks of Glenn dying and everything. And we've had dialogue from Negan saying like everything's brought up fresh in your mind and I can see that you're crazy and, and all of that. And so we, 
that kind of does lend itself into like her finally losing the plot here and going to attack Negan. Mm. Um, coming up to one of my, I have two highlights actually. The sure. first highlight yeah. is when he kicks her off the edge here. <laughs> um, just the stunt itself. Actually, yeah, it, that was pretty cool. In one sort of shot, I, I would like to watch it to try and see the cut or something where it's probably a stunt double. It's got to be a stunt double, but it looked great. At least they made the mattresses a part of the scene here rather oh, than Rosita gosh, yeah. falling where you could plainly see it. Oh, it I'm scared to watch that like on the Blu-ray cut just to see. Just, I, yeah, they won't edit that out, will they? I don't no. think so. Could you pause Shocking. it really quickly? Um, see if the... Yeah, so the audio is muted inside the app there. Yeah, if you just unmute that, then I've got audio of when he gets stabbed here. All right, we ready? Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. We didn't see that. Yeah, see that? Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Very good. And then again here, yeah, clearly a stunt double. Gotta yeah. be. That yeah, I mean if you look at that, it doesn't look like him. If we go back. Close enough. Like, oh yeah. absolutely. Oh, but yeah, you can see on. it's someone different. Good though. Enjoyable mm. and it that to me when when you have impressive stunts and they don't look like a cop out and sure there's not like a big fall mat like there was with Rosita, you know, falling. Yeah. <laughs> well, there is, but it's supposed to be there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thing, that, yeah, it just felt all of it felt so unnecessary. Like, even the stab mm -hmm. and the the response afterwards. Like he's obviously been stabbed. He makes the classic mistake that everyone makes when they get stabbed in a movie or show and pulls the knife out. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but after that, nothing. He's like, oh yeah, it's fine. There's no like yeah bleeding. Yeah. There's, no there's even... not even a puncture wound. Yeah, and these biker jackets are good, hey. Apparently. <laughs> Better than a helmet. Stop a knife. Yeah. Yeah, no blood, mm. no wincing in pain now, nothing. He's moving his arm around. mean fine. anything for the rest of the episode? Like, no, it, yeah. It's not like it changed the dynamics of something like that. No. Mm. Which is kind of like, the whole episode looks good. Sure, yeah. Like I just said earlier, it seems like each scene is a separate little thing which doesn't really fit with... The grand. Mm. Um, I will say there's one more positive. I, I like this whole set piece where they're walking across the beams and stuff like oh, yeah. that. Yeah. And and just that they were being careful about it. Like it, they weren't just running across <laughs> where it made it obvious that it was fake. It was like, no, no, they're, you know, taking their time, trying to balance, like, mm. um, yeah. yeah. Added a little bit of extra realism to it and mm. just the environment playing a part of it, which it should. Um, yeah. yeah. I agree with that. That was that was quite nice. We're about to see um, the Croat come along in his helmet <laughs> and oh, do like that a was grin. Weird. What was that supposed to convey? Do you think, Liam? That grin, joy. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Just pure joy, but psychotic joy. Sure. Why? What would you psychotic. say it would convey? <laughs> well, because arguably he's supposed to be the bad guy. Hmm. You know, even though we don't fear him, we know he's a bit unhinged. We've talked about that. So if you see a smile, it's supposed to probably make us uncomfortable, even if it is joyful. But it just looks <laughs> goofy. Yeah. Well, his whole character That's has great. been goofy, right? Like he's come across as unhinged and psychotic, but the threatening aspect of it hasn't been there. I've found mm. he doesn't come across as that scary. He's just a crazy guy who doesn't really become that imposing, right? Mm -hmm. And already under the thumb of this other yeah. new lady. Now that we've learned. In um, the second half of this episode, at least, I, I kind of liked him a lot more. Like, the acting and stuff all seemed to make sense for the character and um, mm. I I could definitely get on board with it as this kind of weird obsessed guy, obsessed with approval and uh, yeah. all that sort of stuff. But, yeah, it was just the other times where he was supposed to be intimidating. He wasn't really yeah. in the way he should have been, but... Yeah. Mind you, that I guess looking back now, in hindsight, it does kind of fit, given he was under the sure. thumb by this other woman the whole time. Mm. So he never, I guess, was this big bad villain. He sure. was just, like he said, you know, this is like mum and dad meeting. <laughs> he was the kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got an interesting note here on this whole knife on the throat, <laughs> besides the obvious that Ben commented on. 
which is that when you, the, they're in there, she's got the knife right up to his throat and then it cuts to a wide shot of the van like swerving across the street. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Negan's already had his throat cut by Rick. So. Yeah, maybe he's Not got a stronger again. scar tissue yeah. there, actually. Yeah, maybe. 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 But just this whole idea of holding a knife up to somebody's throat as this like, don't move or else you'll get it. You know, like I've got you in a completely submissible position here. Uh, interesting thing, your trachea... I don't know. Well, Ben might... Oh, we, he didn't actually get hit in the throat, actually. We, we <laughs> joked about it. That, that was your story. If you, if you put your hand to your throat, listeners, you can do this wherever you are. It's quite like um, like the cartilage or whatever is mm. in there. I don't know if there's actual bone or whatever, but it's mm. actually quite tough. Yeah. Um, it, it takes a good old mm. lop to even get through there. So this idea of like throat cutting as like a instant death type thing, you'll choke on your own blood. It's not quite like that. Mm. Um, I've actually read, and this is, don't ask me why or how I read this. Oh, we will. But uh, <laughs> well, the police will. <laughs> better actually that you take the person's left hand. I've, this is a bit of visual only for the boys. But if you actually hold it like behind their head, exposing their armpit, and you actually have the knife up against the armpit, way softer, and you have access to the heart. Ooh. So like oh. that's that's That'd like extremely definitely painful. don't move, or else I can quickly and then yeah. what, pierce your heart. That's no hope for you. <sighs> oh. so, Crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Very medieval. But uh, yeah, I know it's it's a bit more of a... Well, it's not quite as... Uh, what do you call it? Like dramatic or... Yeah. Sure. Doesn't quite look as threatening, but yeah. Well, well, knife on our the British throat. listeners should take note of that. There's a lot of knife crimes over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what's your... Guard your underarms. <laughs> <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure like you'll get cut and it'll hurt, you know, your neck and everything. So you don't want to move and all of that, but... This idea of don't move or else I'll, you know. Mm. We have got that. You've got one of your main arteries in there, haven't you? Where if that's severed, you can bleed out in, what, 30 seconds or something, isn't it? But you can also, it's not like it, the way you always see people is like they can't breathe, like they're choking on yeah, their Yeah, it blood wouldn't be that though. No. It'd be like you die of blood loss. Right. Yeah. Mm. Like very quickly. Blood, well, you'd pass out. Well, you can be saved like Negan was though. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know what I'm talking about also, but. Just we are not medical room. professionals by any stretch. Definitely sounds like you do. <laughs> I don't believe that man's ever been to medical school. <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts on this scene? What are your thoughts on this scene? I didn't like it. Okay. <laughs> That's the very brief synopsis of it. Like angsty Herschel is just irritating. Yeah. Maggie, yeah, like being, oh my lost baby, just doesn't. It's not <laughs> selling it. My first thought was. Did they have a whole bunch of lines, but he wasn't getting them right, and so they just said, "Look, just look like <laughs> just shut up, kid. tired and traumatized, <laughs> and not say a word." But it kind of fits the scene, I thought as well. And we later find out that he actually was tortured; he lost a toe and everything, mm. and and all of that. So he's clearly shocked about the whole situation. Don't know why he's so angsty about it. This whole "you don't see me" thing yeah. I, I didn't really Get connect out of yourself, with me. Man. <laughs> uh, yeah, that whole. You don't see anything was really strange. Mm. Next up, we've got... Uh, we finally see a little bit of New Babylon, as it's called. Well, one last note, sorry, on the last thing. I like that Negan said, good to see a kid, or whatever he said to him. Like, Because they've got a bit of a history. Um, where a little he saved bit. his life. And yeah. it's like, oh, one day we'll sort this out. Or, you know, whatever he yeah. said to him. Can you imagine? Because he <laughs> has that whole thing of, like, one day when you're big enough, if yeah. you want to come get me or whatever, like, you know... Can you imagine now Herschel's a bit grown up as he's just walking past, like Takes he knees him in the, <laughs> in the groin or something. Like. I was kind of hoping one of them would just shoulder the other, like, you bugger, like, now I'm here because yeah. of you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on with what you were saying. I know, I'm just leading into the next scene now with uh, New Babylon. We get a, a taste of this new mm. community, I suppose, or... Mm. Could I actually backtrack for one second? Of course we can. That very no, scene, uh, doing this a lot... Um, that last scene that we you don't have to go back it's yeah. fine um, when Herschel is standing there and he starts to slowly walk out I'm thinking mm. to myself are we gonna have one of these moments where it's like um, you think they're gonna reunite and then he just gets like shot or stabbed or whatever from behind and then ah. that, that whole thing which sets her crazy and yeah yeah I wondered if they would go because the music mm. sounded very ominous yeah it, it didn't sound peaceful it didn't sound <clears throat> no. reuniting and, and anything like that it was like Something's wrong. Something's very wrong here. So there was a part of me that thought that he was going to opt to stay, 
Oh. I thought that perhaps, I don't know, they've got some sort of leverage and he's going to like take a few steps forward and then go, nah, got to stay for whatever reason. I did like that about the scene um, that like you didn't know where it was going. It could have mm. gone any or mm. or Maggie could have changed her mind and said, no, nah, actually, Negan's with me here. You know, <laughs> take let's, my let's kid. fight our way out <laughs> together. Like, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it could have gone any number of ways and, and mm. you were on the edge of your seat trying to guess where it was going to go. So that was cool. Mm. Or me at least. And then similar with now this scene where you've got uh, Boss Lady talking to Mm -hmm. Pearly. (laughs) The whole time I'm thinking, this seems off. The whole thing seems off. Mm. And the the lady for me... Oh, have I just lost sound or is that... Oh, yeah, there we go. That's just the headphones. Sorry. Uh, Similar kind of to when uh, Croat was doing his his monologues where it's like, ah, I'm not quite buying it. It just seems like an actor reading lines. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. but but then actually where it went was so surprising to me because she's doing this whole stupid monologue about <laughs> tobacco or whatever or, or cigars, and I thought she was gonna go in the direction of like, oh, when you put the heat on someone, they tell the truth. Because yeah. she seemed to be like interrogating Pearly, and she, she didn't believe him. But then she, all she was saying was that, oh, we need heaps of heat to make more cigars and. Uh, Ethanol is not an effective way to get it, so let's use methane. <laughs> and that was pretty much it. Is that right? Or am I yeah, that was the gist of what I picked up from it, yeah. So that's obviously the setup for next season is they're going to try and go and take over Manhattan or whatever to get the methane. Yeah. Got to yeah. do it for the cigars, I guess. Do you got to do All of it was... But even that sort of premise... To me, that's such a letdown because we were sold this whole thing of New York City is this desolate wasteland mm. filled with walkers, you know, Dead City or Isle of the Dead initially. Yeah. And now it's just oh, it's just a methane place, you know, that we barely got to see a decent horde mm. outside of the ones that had gathered around the stadium. The animated ones, yeah. Yeah, like it, there really wasn't many walkers at all, I thought. True. Hardly any in comparison to the build-up we were. Mm. it was sold under and now there's going to be a war for the methane mm. which is weird in itself I don't know if it's like the actual distilling if that's a horrible way to put it process <laughs> but like that only the cryot has the knowledge of how to do it but hello there's dead people everywhere yeah yeah. like yeah. I thought it was more to do with like the, the tunnels maybe and the way uh, it was all trapped in there uh, I can't uh, remember what they said in the other episode okay maybe mm. sure it's something to do with that um, backtracking. Uh, <laughs> you have Pearly driving past the sign of New Babylon. We do. Um, it's a weird thing. It's I really like to see it when they do it well. When you have an establishing shot, establishing shot of a character, and then they drive away, and then the camera pans to show you more of the area. In this case, the sign that says New Babylon. Mm. Um, only other thing is, I kind of wish they'd cut to a different shot of his car driving away and then instead of panning sideways the camera just lowered to show you the sign of new babylon it's it's a very weird thing to pick up yeah. on but i just i've seen shows and movies that do it and i go ah there you go see here his car takes away and then pan to the right new babylon i would yeah. have liked it just from yeah shots from above the sign and then just lower down to New Babylon. It's a bit picky. It's but, a but very no, picky. I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But that's exa- That's just where my mind went straight away. Could you, Liam, go back to the shot of those walkers um, on the you hanging know I can. post, whatever you call it? Doing a great job, Liam. I'm doing the Lord's work over here. Just go back like 10 seconds. I'm just a man. <laughs> <laughs> that one on the right totally looks like Jason Segal. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I wondered that lady in the middle. Didn't work. Oh no, <laughs> that lady in the middle who's like only half a body, whether she had that whole like awful splitting thing up happen to her, and now she's an example or whatever. Oh, uh, they were talking about. Yeah, what they were they were going to do to Negan? Yeah. Good point. Good point. Yep. Watch in the next season. They're going to find out that Pearly lied about Negan's thing, and they're going to yeah. be like. Code 14, Section 2 says a martial lies and it's instant death <laughs> or whatever. He'll be up there. Oh, uh, yeah. Whatever silly thing. That's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about a, a season two, Isaac? Not excited. 
Mm. Yeah. Always keen to chill with you boys and to watch sure. these things and talk. But um, the last shot, and we can wait to talk about it if you want, <laughs> but the very final shot told me kind of exactly uh, who's in charge of all of this. Like the split <laughs> shot between oh, like gosh, yeah, to have a split terrible. shot is one thing, but then to have it synced that they both look up and obviously they don't exactly look up at the same time. So there's a little bit of like lips and nose and eyes that don't line up properly. Uh, yeah, I was like, cool idea. Let's give it a try. Having a look at it, it definitely doesn't work. So let's no. not do it. Mm. Who's in charge of it? Don't know. Ah. Eli Jornet, I guess. I ah, think he's the showrunner. Yeah. But, um, Get it together, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> My solution for that is very, very simple. You can still have them don't. side by side, but have their whole face. Have yeah. them, you know. Sure. Yeah. Don't sell be less jarring. Do, do the face off yeah. thing where they're like half, half. No, it just looks shocking. <laughs> and, and more so, just the idea of it to me is just like, oh, it's a bit, like it, it doesn't fit within the language of the rest of the show. No. That's, that's the word there, language, yeah. Right. Old mate Herschel, young mate Herschel, yeah, complaining yeah. about a bit of a whinge. Yeah, mummy never looking at him. Always wanting to hunt down the big bad wolf. Yeah, you know, kid was captured, locked up, tortured. <laughs> wah wah wah. You never <laughs> see me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the funny thing about the uh, the end of all of this is when she knocks on his door later on, and it's like I have this thing with Negan. I've got to go finish it. That way I can just let it go and then I can see. So like this kid's complaining, like, you don't look at me. She's like, I know. I'm just going to go back to that yeah, guy, yeah, sort yeah. it all out, okay? Just just hang 10, okay, buddy? Even though it's now easier than ever to just leave it behind yeah. and right now <laughs> choose to give him all my attention. He's sitting there saying like, did you hear nothing <laughs> of what I said? Mm. Goes and, over and uh, looks at a picture he's drawing. Hey, cool picture. It sucks. <laughs> Scratches it up again. <laughs> Remember that? Yep. Yeah, yep. I remember that. A little note on his actual toe. Apparently, your little toe does wonders for balance standing really? up. And if your you little toe? Yeah. You look at it and think, wow. oh, it's just a little toe. I can. But apparently, yeah, you use it for stabilizing a lot. I thought that was your big toe. I think it's all your toes, but then, yeah, your little toe as well. Wow, You'd probably you be better to miss a mi- like one of the middle toes rather than the yeah. little one. Right? Yeah. So it's right Symmetry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Similar to your pinky finger, I think, is like, what is it, like 60% of your grip or something Whoa. like that? Because it like wraps around the final thing. Oh. That's, I don't know what that That's number cool. is, but yeah. yeah. I've, I've learned something. There you go. Need to test this theory. Nice shot of the Statue of Liberty, actually. I, I did like how it's uh, cracked in the center there. Mm. Just like in the opening mm. credits. I was a bit sad that we didn't get any like shots at the Statue of Liberty. I thought we were going to get a bit of that. A little bit cliche though, like yeah, but if like in the intro, what do you, whatever you call it, sequence design, mm. sure. there were people climbing out of it, like oh. at the top of it, just walkers and such. Or? No, no, it looked like people. Oh right, yeah, and it's yeah, a big enough part of all the the posters and the marketing. Yeah. Hmm. There we go. I oh, know. Oh, there we go. Uh, there's oh there. wow! Look at that. Is that just oh, birds? Oh, no, they're crows. <laughs> what? I think. Those are crows. No. No, that was a person. How yeah. big is the Statue of Liberty? Because that Pretty big. Was like, if that was a crow, that's a ginormous crow. Really? It's got like a whole observatory thing at the top where yeah, you can watch the, the one on the it right. Like the one on the right is a crow. Though. That looks like a crow. Okay, maybe it's a crow. They're both crows. Let's... Oh, look at the size of... That's a big crow then. Crows oh, can yeah, get decent. Like a... I don't know if that's... Or if that's, that's a ladder that would sustain mm. a person. <clears throat> and you've got people, that's obviously a lookout area from what I can understand. So, so like the animators a... just got the scaling wrong, but that's yep. absolutely a bird. Yep, okay, I stand corrected. However, I would have liked to have seen Statue of Liberty. Hey, look, you got to put that one on the left did look like a person for a minute. It did <laughs> for a hot like moment, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, moving on to the next scene, we've got the heartfelt conversation between old mate Croat and the big bad wolf. Big Bad Wolf is doing his best blue steel. Yeah. <laughs> Croat is trying his darndest to break through the cold exterior. It's break uh, through more of a daddy. magnum though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I 
He does have one um, line which I thought was interesting when he's talking about, you know, he has the whole thing about I whacked the guy and he was a puddle on the ground and all that. And he says something about like, uh, it was beautiful, wasn't it? And he, then Nick <laughs> yeah, said, yeah, yeah, it was, was beautiful. And you're like, oh. Well, do we think he was playing along or what do we reckon? I think he's a bit resigned at this stage. Like the look on his face kind of says like, <laughs> I don't want to do any of this, whatever. <laughs> like, sure. <laughs> Yeah, that fits. You know when you're driving home from something on a late night and there's yep. someone next to you just won't stop talking to yeah. you, just <laughs> you agree just with everything them. they say, yeah. you're completely <laughs> zoned out. It's how you win a... Uh, I heard this story once from a friend of mine. He's like, Liam, let me tell you, you can win an argument with a woman, any single argument. All you have to do is say, you're right, I'm sorry. His wife then turned around and was like, how dare you? That's that's so misogynistic. Right away, he's like, you're right, I'm sorry. Yeah, good point. My bad. Sorry about that. She's like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Half an hour later, I hear, oi! <laughs> hey. That's the sort of vibe we're picking up from Negan just here. Just like, yep, you're right. It was beautiful, that puddle of, of uh, brain matter and blood. Season two starts with the cry out going, hey. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what did I do? I pressed the button. Whoops. Right. Resume. There you go. Um, so, talking about puddles, you've got uh, Ginny here making a very silly mistake, sleeping with candles lit. Mm. Not only is that very dangerous, they could fall over and start a fire, but if you wake up in the morning well-rested, there's going to be a puddle of wax, like, streaming down your <laughs> chest of drawers, on the carpet, on the ground, or whatever. Mm. Altogether irresponsible. What are you doing? Oh, it's kind of on Maggie as well. She could have Yeah, she's out. the adult in the room. Also, a waste of resources. I take it yeah, candles yeah. aren't all that easy to... Well, actually, I don't know about that. How do you make a candle? Do you, can you reuse the wax? I, I don't know. Because obviously, it's going to re-solidify once it... According to Shrek, it, it's pretty yeah. easy. Yeah. Just pull it out of the ear, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd have to get a new wick, but... John Wick. Uh, yes. I'm in. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm back. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> now, we've got Herschel now... Being angsty as per usual. You know what? I actually think this probably would have been a lot better if it was not set as futuristically and Herschel was the same kid from like the yeah. original series. I agree. Yeah. I feel like that would have been a bit better. He would have been younger, so there would have been more of an element of he can't fend for himself. We might not have got the angstiness. Mm. Were they really... I don't know if that angstiness is somehow motivating... Maggie, though, whether she sees it as like, oh, I'm I'm failing as a mother, I can't connect with my son and all of this. And she can tell like in all of these scenes where he says something super snarky at her mm. and then she has like a moment where she just kind of goes, mm, like, you know, what do I say to this? And then in some scenes she just like goes, that, yep, sure, whatever, like you want to be like that, fine. And then other times she tries to dig a little bit more and gets hit with another, you know, remark. And so I don't know, maybe somehow it is uh, motivating her to, can, oh, yeah. yeah. You could still get that from not having an angsty teenager, though. Yeah. You could have, like, a, a kid who's very reserved. Like, why can't I connect with my kid? Same sort of situation. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I'm all, just about all out of notes except for one more. Oh, hey, hit me. What do we got? Um. Oh. Uh, Oh, uh, one of my highlights. Oh, we're, we're going to see it a little bit later on in there. Um, but something that I was reminded about in the last episode by something in this episode, when Maggie has that line about it wasn't the Statue of Liberty for me, it was um, uh, Macy's. Macy's. Yeah. Um, there was a shot in the last episode where they're in a gift shop, um, Pearly and Negan, and Negan's just playing with a little Statue of Liberty um, oh, you know, right. souvenir commemorative thing. Um, just while they're talking, he doesn't reference it at all. He's kind of just passing it between his hands and then he like puts it back up on the shelf. I was like, yeah, actually, you did have a whole thing talking about. Mm. That's mm. what you wanted. So I think, yeah, simple thing, very easy to miss. I certainly missed it. So, no, oh, nice. But uh, clever good thing spot. to put yeah, in there. Good spot. Yeah. Uh, highlight coming up then here is uh, here the introduction, go. Negan, to. What's this lady's name? I don't, know, I don't, I don't think know, we've got a name, have we? I don't think. We're not anything. good at names with any of these things, but I'm just going to refer to her as Mummy because Crowley. Well, he calls her Mama. Yeah, yeah. Mum and Dad meeting. 
Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so here he comes here. He's these big theatrics with his arms. Allow me to introduce it. Thank you. And she <laughs> says, get out. And he's like, clearly he's been like building up this moment. He's like, finally, I get to introduce Negan. I'm so excited. You can see he like gives him a little pat and everything. And then he just gets cut down straight away. And like, out you go. Uh, like the worm be- tail of the Walking Dead universe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be because of what we talked about uh, last episode with how he says the name Negan. Uh, yeah. She didn't want <laughs> the show to get taken off TV. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly. Maybe she, yeah, she's just very anti-racism. She's like, yeah. I will not stand for this. Yeah. Be gone. <laughs> but even, yeah, his arms are just left there lingering in the air. Like, you know, <laughs> he's very confused and then he's looking back and forth. I think it's great because you've, You've got him effectively as the joke character now. Yeah. Mm. Like, look at you. You look silly. You act silly. You're, you're a pawn, really. So I've yeah. lost everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at him. He's like, oh, man. I was about to I see mum and dad unite. Uh, yeah. yeah. Really like Weird. the set here. Yeah. Works more now in this episode. Yes, it does. Hmm. Well, why didn't he yeah. want to sit down? Just a power move. Cramp in his leg, he said. <laughs> Actually, though? He's been riding around in a oh, van all day. Enough. But probably power move, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my money's on power move. If anything, you should have said I was stabbed. <laughs> like, I don't want to... <laughs> if Maggie had stabbed yeah. him in the leg, that might have been a better excuse. The power move was not accepting the drink. Mm. Mm. Especially when it's already been poured. <laughs> Oh, I'm smiling I'm while man. she's pouring it. Yeah. Like, I'm going <laughs> to reject that. <laughs> but then he did drink it right at the end. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he did. Oh, that's subtle then. Mm. So it's kind of like he's agreeing. Well, he's, he's got no other option, does he? Yep. Question for you guys. What did you think was in the box? What's in the box? I had no idea. I, I was... was... Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say I had no idea. I was stunned. Like I've got no clue. Hmm. I had an idea. Ben? What was your idea, Seth? I thought it was going to be the blown off ear of... (laughs) And she was going to be like, go take his other ear. (laughs) Prove that you can... Something like, you did it once, you can do it again. (laughs) That's great. I was thinking like the... um, It's slightly too small for it, but the Polaroids that they had in the Ah. sanctuary of all the smash heads, maybe the Ah. ones the Croat had done. Like that. I was wondering, like, I, I, I say I had no idea. The only things that I was thinking were within the same time frame, of, like some sort of relic from when he was in power. Mm. So Lucille was the first thing that came to mind. I'm like, maybe is there like a snippet of barbed wire or something? Or, mm. but yeah, I had no clue when she opened it. I'm like, what is that? Yeah, I <laughs> thought it was a snail. <laughs> <laughs> it's from Daryl. He's in France. <laughs> <laughs> they eat these here. <laughs> yeah. Tell him I tried. I'm still trying. Anyway. Yeah, that's that's more or less all I've got. As far as like a season finale goes, this is what I'm saying. Like, again, great acting, great character moments, but I feel like the whole thing was very incohesive. Mm. Each scene felt very separate and so therefore confusing when you join mm. them all together. We talked about Maggie and Negan's fight scene just kind of coming up out of the blue. Each scene with Herschel, I was kind of just bored and wanting to move forward and ahead. Mm. Yeah, I suppose I just didn't find it that interesting. Obviously, Negan loved Negan the whole time. Everything that he's mm. a part of, he's easily the best part of this whole show for me. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. that's me. Definitely, yeah. As a finale, j- just because of the cliffhanger, it's, <laughs> it's underwhelming. But also, you feel like, okay, it's it, it's gonna have the big finale moment, and like, oh, this first action set piece was cool. You had you know a few walkers down below and stuff like that and uh, two walker kills that negan does like oh okay that's kind of exciting like can't wait to see what the the big showdown is going to be and it's yeah, like oh okay that there was is none. that was all they had <laughs> yeah <laughs> which obviously budget is is probably or well, definitely a, a big part of uh those storytelling decisions um which almost makes you feel like this is kind of um like they're just going to keep the show going, keep doing cliffhangers yeah. until it gets cancelled, rather than giving it an actual big, big budget finale episode. Um, yeah, 
It's a bit of a bit of let down in that Such sense, and especially because, like, come on, guys, this is the one lesson you should have learned from the last yeah. show. Don't yeah. build up and then do a big cliffhanger. Yep. Yeah. I feel though, like, so you say it's been renewed for season two, but yeah, could... as if they didn't already know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like, there is a way in which it would be disappointing, I suppose, but you could end it right here. And be like, oh, what did she do? She, you know, she's going to go back and then maybe like in yeah. whatever other spin-off show, they just reference it or they maybe have one or two episodes similar to like Mandalorian, how it like jumped to like a book of Boba mm. Fett or the other sure. way around. The show kind yeah. of did a bit of cross-pollination there, but mm. yeah. 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 It's just like, I guess just with the direction of the whole Walking Dead universe overall um that's definitely probably my biggest fear but it's it's becoming more and more likely is that it's going to end at some point like this yeah where that it'll just get cancelled because there's no pulling it's up terrible. viewers yeah, yeah it's watching. terrible yeah. um and and yeah rather than actually working towards something where they can end yeah. it and do it properly um they're just going to keep shooting out in all these directions and they'll just get cancelled one day and there just won't yeah. be a proper Fizzle. ending for anything um yeah which is such a shame. Like the, I'm, I'm looking at this with this series. Yes, it's canon, but I'm actually looking at this and going like, the series like eleven from one to mm. eleven. That's The Walking Dead for me. Yeah. Everything else, I'm sort of disregarding it to a degree, because this just doesn't feel like The Walking Dead. Mm. I um, like that they've set uh, it up so you can look at it that way. That like they've they've given it a, a, a pretty definitive ending at least, and. Um, yeah, and, and these yeah. shows you can just decide to ignore them if you want. I just want to see an edit, just by the way, of like Negan opening the box and there's one of the, those like joke springs that just boing, boing, out. <laughs> like, ah. <laughs> or even the same, you could have him say the same like just boing, what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. You can post them. Oh, you, you make it, I'll post it on the Instagram. Great. Excellent. I dig it. <laughs> I dig it. But yeah, like this this whole series has been, it does it just doesn't feel like The Walking Dead. Like we watched The Walking Dead. From, well, I watched The Walking Dead because I love the idea of surviving in a post apocalyptic world with creatures mm. that are trying to eat you. And this series just didn't really have that. Like we've yeah. got a few walkers, we've got a little bit of in, of confrontation, and we look at that and instantly go budget. Like you can see that the budget is the issue, but. To me, that's just not good enough. Like, no, if you haven't got the budget, then write something that's going to fit the budget but still is good. Sure. It's a tricky predicament because you're working with things by nature that aren't cheap, like a run-down city, which you have to animate, all of these walkers in costume and everything. Yeah, and New York, which is a very expensive mm. place to film. Yeah, so it's not something like, you know... I don't know, Red Dog or whatever, as an example. Mm. You can just go out to a dusty plain and sure. a small town and everything there. Um, so it's tricky to be able to say, oh, budget issues here and there when your whole show relies on you having this spectacle of mm. walking dead people. I mm. get that. But like in that, with that argument there being New York City being the big expenditure, mm. then say, cool, like we haven't got the budget to do New York City. Like We'll continue their story, but somewhere where we can actually tell a really good story. True, because it just says somewhere dead else. city. It could yeah. be any city in the world. Exactly right. It doesn't or need to be... just don't write it in yeah. a city. <laughs> yeah, like if, if New York City is going to blow your budget, don't make the show about New York City. Mm. Pure and simple. Or it's like New York is also famous for all of its like subway tunnels and stuff. Mm. Like, and we saw some of that. But like it's it's also famous for some of its like banking things, which we saw as well. It's like you can contain your scenes... To like smaller set pieces and not have to have all of these grand broken down yeah. shots of the whole of New York. And, you know, knowing me, I'd probably say the opposite. If we didn't get any shots of New York, I'd be like, oh, well, where was all the yeah, carnage sure. and all of that? So I'm sure it's, like I say, it's kind of cursed either way. Yeah. But that's if you decide to do a big, make it revolve around a big city, which they didn't yeah. have to do. Yeah. They knew what budget they had and they chose exactly to right. yeah. set it in a very expensive place to film. Which is interesting as well now because I don't know if you guys want to talk about the Daryl Dixon. Yeah, let's do it. Mm. So we watched this in advance. Oui, well, oui. Benj and I had previously seen it. Isaac watched it after this episode just wrapped up. 
So, gentlemen, mm. thoughts on the Daryl Dixon trailer? Went to go say something French and all I could think of was moi moi. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, nope. <laughs> but that does give us a really easy segue. Check out our other content. Ah, that is an easy intro nice. into Astromech, which is our Turn Sounds podcast based around Star Wars. Mm. Excellent. So, for any of you viewers or listeners who enjoy a little bit of a little bit of sci-fi, a little bit of Star Wars, a little bit of Jedi and Sith or some moi moi. <laughs> Come on over to Astromech. Join in the fun over there. Excellent. And if you're already watching Dead City, you're, you're good at being sold on spin-offs <laughs> and that sort of yeah. thing. So, uh, yeah, very good. Exactly. This one is just as disappointing. So, <laughs> so right. that went downhill. Now, right. Daryl Dixon. It's not. It's good. Check out Astromech. <laughs> yeah, great plug. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, what do we think? What are our thoughts on the old mate Daryl Dixon trailer? You were quite positive, weren't you? Isaac? Yeah, well, like, you go yeah. first. I gotta say, this like, uh, if I'd seen one trailer, I have to go back and watch the trailer for this. But like, so uh, trailer for Dead City, dark, dingy, across like a at night time. You've got um, uh, them sailing across the sea. Like, what's all this about? You know, mm. where are you taking us and everything? And then. Um, and then contrast that with this one, beautiful landscapes, white buildings, um, looks like great set dressings, yeah. great characters, um, great characters involved. Daryl, like the whole thing, I'm looking at it going, this production value looks epic. Like sure. the, some real explosions. Look at this. Um, obviously the whole thing I'm going to have to be sold on as we watch it, mm. but, uh, man, I'm. I'm hooked. Like you got an underwater shot of a boat. <laughs> Look at that. That's sick. Yeah, that's cool actually. <laughs> I don't know if that's a real sunset or whatever, but we know that sunsets are not easy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I know. I'm looking at all of this. Clearly he actually is in France. Uh, I've never been, but I would say that it looks like he's clearly in France. Seems legit. Um, so yeah, I don't know whether the story is lacking or I don't, I'm not sure because Liam... Had some words to say. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what was, what was, it looks terrible. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, so, got, you got Liam. I might yeah? land in the middle somewhere. So okay. let, let's go well, to I mean, extremes first. I suppose I'm being a little bit pessimistic because I didn't really enjoy Dead City. <clears throat> but this just doesn't really, again, feel like The Walking Dead to me. Mm. I love Daryl as a character. My favorite character, I'd say, or if not my favorite, one of my favorites, but this just feels off. And someone actually posted, I think I was on Instagram and I saw this trailer on Instagram. Someone actually posted on this, uh, on the trailer that it looks like a little bit of a ripoff of the last of us. You know, we've got this kid who's apparently <laughs> the, the new hope of humanity. And now our hero has to help the kid get across the countryside. And I saw that I'm like, actually, yeah, I can sort of see the correlation. I did think that initially. Yeah, yeah. here's a format. But that isn't it? that that weird little dancing woman as well. Like, right. what's what is this? This is not The Walking Dead. You, again, well, I think we got to take it with a grain of salt. If it's in France, that's big over there. The whole Moulin Rouge type, um, you know, cabaret dancers and everything like that. Mm. Mm. In a world that's gone crazy, and again, if they're just building up some things, that's you know, what do we like from the old world? You know. <laughs> And then cabaret and stuff like that. So I would see how that would make sense. It is way too bright for the universe. I feel like all of these shiny, you know, lights and, and costuming and stuff like that. Sure, I can see how it looks strange, but I'd say give it a go. Maybe it'll work. Don't get me wrong. I'm definitely going to give it a go. And yeah. I'm definitely probably going to enjoy aspects of it. But it just doesn't doesn't grab me. Yeah, I'm not. When it was announced, I'm like, sweet, Daryl Dixon show. This is going to be awesome. This just doesn't, yeah, it doesn't pull me in. Mm. The, there's definitely something to be said for that. Uh, well, that that underground nightclub, whatever it is, um, that that's the biggest yeah. red flag for me. Um, I, I do have some positives to get to as well, but I guess just the fact that they've chosen to put that in the trailer, especially <laughs> like because there were there were leaks quite a while ago um, of them filming that scene. So it was something for me at least. I was like, when I saw it, I was like, oh, really? that like why it doesn't seem like walking dead at all 
And the, the, like you said, Isaac, it's like, oh, okay, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Who knows how it'll be integrated into the show. But just the fact that they put it in the trailer and they mm. think for whatever reason that would appeal to fans of The Walking mm. Dead and that we'll see that a, a colourful <laughs> underground nightclub weird dancing scene and think, oh, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> like, who, who are they trying nah. to sell on the <laughs> Yeah. So that that's the main thing, I guess, that is a red flag as far as what are they even aiming for. Yeah. Uh, it's fine if it's in there, if it works in the show, but yeah. I, why did you put it in the trailer? Um, but, you know, aside from that, I guess overall I, I'm, I'm keen to watch it. I, feel, I wish it was almost just not related to Walking Dead. Yeah, um, yeah. And I've, I've been trying to think of an example. I'm sure there's somewhere like they'll cast an actor to play pretty much the same role they played in another movie, but like put them in a different movie. Um, uh, uh, there, there's some example I'll think of afterwards, but, um, but yeah, it, 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 something like that could work. Where it's like, oh yeah, you know, it's pretty much Daryl and it's just this other adventure off in France mm. or whatever, but it's not a sequel to The Walking Dead necessarily. Yeah. But this... Still, you better give us a pretty good explanation of why he's in France in the first place. Yeah, and and a good justification not not only explanation but justification for why that makes for a good story. Hmm. Taking it all the way to France, which is something already so ridiculous in the universe. Um, so they've got a lot of explaining to do, and I'm I, my hopes are quite low that they'll do a good job with it. Yeah, uh, with justifying those things. But that being said. I think once we just get in the flow of it, get over that, then uh, uh, I think it'll be an enjoyable show, hopefully. Mm. I hope so. Keen to see more Daryl. One thing to add to that potentially, Mm. and I don't know if this is an angle that we've explored before, but like just generally in the world that we live in, it's Mm. generally accepted and annoying that the whole world kind of revolves around the US, like everything they do is (laughs) important for everybody. And so I feel like this show, even with an American actor going out and seeing that, oh, hang on, the the apocalypse wasn't just in America. I mean, of course it wasn't, but, like, we go over to France and, like, we're going to have this whole story happen here and I think it will potentially appeal to a much wider audience, whereas, uh, I don't know if you just had, like, the, you know, sections of, the you know, where we are in Australia, maybe mm. New Zealand and, and then mostly the US, but then you start moving into European sort of <coughs> settings and I think maybe that's, partially you know besides we joked like you know daryl just or uh, norman Reed just wanted to go to france and like, <laughs> yeah. we'll just film it there or whatever but i think <laughs> like it could, adam sandler <laughs> yeah pretty much. <laughs> going to a resort to film a movie yeah i think that could be good for it yeah that was yeah. a good point yeah. there is a big um i don't know something to say, saying something to america by releasing it on september 11 <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> which oh, I, yeah. I think in america it'll be the 10th because uh, we we'll it a day point. later, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, like, the more I think about it, the more I think I'm just a bit salty around Dead City not being great in my eyes. Sure. Doesn't leave me that excited for what else. Not even Daryl Dixon, but the Rick and Michonne show. I'm like, well, mm. if that's the writing we can now expect from The Walking Dead, mm. I don't have high hopes for the rest of what's to come. That's really the only thing I'm holding on to significant hope for because that I, I really hope and I'm expecting to some extent that that'll um, be kind of a at least a continuation of the main story and, I and, hope so. and wrap ups and things and yeah. feel like that's this is a, a sequel to The Walking Dead whereas yeah. uh, I'm kind of okay at least with seeing the Daryl Dixon and Dead City as just like, oh, you can take it or leave it but like, it's up to you. It, it's it's better than nothing, at least, and you mm. can just pretend it doesn't exist if you don't like <laughs> it. Um, whereas Rick and Michonne, it, that has to yeah work. <laughs> yeah, that's is true. this as well their way of writing these characters out of the Rick and Michonne series? Oh, like, oh, you wondered be. why Daryl, your favorite character, is not in this show? He's over in the Daryl Dixon show in in France. So <laughs> you know, yeah, no, same with Maggie yeah, and Negan, so, yeah. type thing. Mm. Space th- actually space them way, way, way apart, mm. and that's why they're not going to be. Yeah, the, yeah, that doesn't necessarily make it good. <laughs> no, <laughs> that just, no, yeah, <laughs> that, that's all these. Um, that, uh, I, I get what you're saying, um, but yeah, just um, in the sense that 
like there might be a reason behind something but that doesn't make it an interesting idea or mm. something that mm. we as an audience want to see like, and, and also if you're going to be paying the actors anyway to do yeah. all of these external shows why don't you just not do the shows and then have them star in your main rick and michelle sure. yeah yeah mm. it seems to me that they're just and, and kudos to them they're just trying to milk it for as much money as they can I'm hopeful. Sure. I'll, I'll say that. I'm hopeful yeah. for this one. I was for, for Dead City. Mm. And, you know, do we want to give it a rating? And you guys didn't actually do highlights oh, for overall. this episode. I did. Did you? Yeah, that sky shot. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, true, true, true. Ben? Uh, the Macy's thing. But but the overall yeah. scenes, right? the, the locations and everything, the whole vibe of the city. I, I like that and how it captured it in that scene. Look mm. at the location. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, do, yeah, do we want to rate it? Overall, um, yeah. Um, who's going to start? I've got mine go in my for head it then. and I'm not going <laughs> to change it. So if you guys want to go first. I don't have one yet. So I, you go first, Isaac, if you want. I'd probably go four. Four or five. Four yeah. is exactly where I've hit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's difficult also when it's a short series and we don't yeah. have as much time to really flesh out the story and, and get to know why the Croat feels the way he feels and... and exactly how maggie's got into this situation all of these different things so they it is a harder job to be able to tell a nice concise story within such a small time limit and i guess movies do it all the time in like two hours yeah. or less so it's not mm. really not that much of an excuse but in a tv show six is it six episodes mm. yeah it's not a lot not really yeah. not to have a whole and it lot felt of- like they were stretching it for six yeah yeah, yeah. Boy, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, for for me, it, both enjoyment and kind of technical wise, there was a lot that was really janky about it. Yeah. Quite a few shots that I really questioned. Um, the whole shot, of just to put it to rest, the whole new Babylon sign shot, I don't really care about it. That much. <laughs> sure, about but, that. but it does bring it down a number. <laughs> yeah. it, I was going to give it a 5 out of 10, but then I did that pan to the side. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But yeah, like, and then just like random characters that they introduced just for this show, like mm. Pearly. Like the cry out, like this lady mama or whoever, and <laughs> like you know, <laughs> like so it's it's tricky. And then like the whole New Yorker team and everything that ended up just dying yeah. altogether. Oh, yeah. So just I don't know. Mm, I'm really pretty yeah. redundant. Yeah, it's a four out of ten for me. Mm. Yeah, I think I think that's a pretty good. I would maybe go for a three but i I think four is fair because it it is competently made like you know however much we complain about some technical things like it's it's well made enough that you you can watch it and it's it passes and the story's written enough well enough that you can follow it and it it goes somewhere but it just doesn't really exceed in pretty much Mm. any area and there's definitely a letdown in most of them so yeah yeah it's all right. Yeah. There were a handful of very good scenes, which I just, mm. I'd really look back on fondly. Sure. Um, but yeah. Yeah. You could have made one like movie effectively. Yeah. 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 Using Definitely. that like horrific um, melded together one um, Walker, like we talked about that whole scene mm. with Negan in, in Knock Knock, who's there. Like, mm. you know, there's just some great scenes. For sure. But, uh, Wasted opportunities. Yeah. Or ju- not wasted opportunities for me, more just like they didn't hit their mark. Much like the cry out, they swung and they missed. So, mm. yeah. Mm. That story yeah. he tells about with the bat, he swung and missed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are they going to hit it too hard with Daryl Dixon? That's the question. Oh, oh. Oi. Mm. Oi. We shall see. Whatever that may mean. <laughs> <laughs> How do you. Uh, I'll not go there. But... <laughs> Go on. How do you swing too hard? If you're if you're gonna hit someone with a bat in order to kill them, how do you swing too hard? Well, I thought the idea was more so that it's like, oh, you want to hit a, a medium amount so then they're still alive and you can make a show out of it. Like, yeah, I think that was okay. the idea. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was picking was up on. Quick, then. Like Negan hitting Abraham and then going, whoa, taking it like a champ. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah, speaking of uh, what a few other notes on just upcoming shows, there was because there was San Diego Comic Con or whatever. Last week, um, so they released this and a, a teaser for Rick and Michonne, which isn't really, <sighs> it, it's not really anything. It's just like a teaser. <sighs> it's two shots of them or something. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but like 
but yeah, so that one's they're gonna they've named it. What is it? The ones who live. Yeah. So um, that's the name the, of the show. Yeah, yeah, that's the name of the show. It is what it is. It's all uh, right. I it don't obviously mind that. ties into the end of of the main show. So yeah. yeah, it's something. There were rumors about Daryl Dixon that it was going to be called uh, Raise the Dead, which is kind of okay. I don't hate it, especially yeah. now. Um, you know, it's going to be potentially about this kid who's the the savior of whatever. <laughs> Um, uh, and it could raise could also mean like, uh, like when you raise a city, like destroy it, yeah, <laughs> blow it yeah, up, or yeah. uh, it's kind of could have been an interesting name, but Daryl yeah. Dixon works. I mean, it's not confusing at all with Daryl Dixon, you yeah. Know, oh, that guy, I remember yeah. him, <laughs> sure. but also, well, like, would it have been called The Walking Dead, Raise the Dead, or would it be called Just I Raise think the so. Dead? Yeah, it'd be The Walking Dead, Raise the Dead, I'm sure. Mm. So I think that's what all of them are now, aren't yeah. they? The Walking Dead, blah, blah, blah. Let gotcha. And this is, yeah, The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. There mm. you go. Mm. Mm. So I like it. I that. like it. I think that's yeah. clever. Yeah. It's not bad. Probably the best show name out of all the new ones we've had, I'd say. Mm. I mean, I don't hate Dead City as a, as a name. That's all right. <laughs> I, I like Isle of the Dead better. I think yeah. that was a bit cool. Uh, back to this again. Back yep. to this full circle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, just one other random thing, I guess. Then if the, if you had to pick one other spinoff show for them to announce, what would you pick? Ooh. That's a tough one. Mm. I would love, a, well, maybe not backstory, but I'd love more of The Whisperers. Oh, interesting. That would be a cool show. Mm. But how the Alpha came to power. Right. Yeah. I can't say Woodbury. I know I can't say Woodbury. (laughs) Say it, say it. Uh, I don't really know. I mean, they've got a reason because there was a whole book about the rise of the governor. Yeah. So, yeah, they may as well. They've got it there. I'd like to more see, like, actual training schools or whatever like an academy for like how to mm. we've seen it like salt and peppered throughout the different shows where you've got like in this or i don't know if it was in this season series or if it was the end of the walking dead where it's like you were late for training camp or whatever um mm. i think it was this one yeah maggie was mad at herschel and then in like world beyond or whatever you've got like them in class learning about what to do and all i feel like there is somewhere you could go with that and like have a cast of characters inside of an actual academy. Um, maybe they're late teenagers to early twenties, so they're not annoying teenage group, but they're also very young and and um, inexperienced in sure. the world. Um, yeah, that's I don't even know what you'd call it. Raising the dead? Why not? It's not taken <laughs> anymore. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, I like it. Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind a because like, we we've kind of proven that Gabriel and Aaron are a good uh, duo together, oh, like yeah, yeah. Uh, something like that. But just keep it really simple, literally, like like the episode they had, literally just a supply run and make yeah, that a little yeah. six episode thing. Wouldn't that be so cool in in New York? And, and like yeah. you were saying, or whoever it was, who was saying um, about you know the, all the talk of it being like this place where there's massive hordes and there's just so many walkers like just them having six episodes of trying to navigate this place and sure you can have a few you know a a villain or some sort of overarching thing if you want but um but the main conflict is just the world and the dead and it's because that was the thing with this as well is like people complain in the original show that it became not about walkers anymore it became about people and walkers were just in the background mm. and that was this too yeah. walkers weren't the main conflict in dead city by any means so um just taking it back to that i think would be really cool they don't even need to be the main conflict they just need to be present and a threat sure sure like if if people are the overarching villain great but mm. yeah not at the detriment of what makes the walking dead the walking dead which is the walkers yeah but even what they could have done more with uh, All Out War even, just make the walkers a part of it where yeah. um, someone had the idea of, yeah, like they're in the middle of a war and a, a herd comes along so mm. they've both got to stop fighting and, and go and, you know, take shelter or join together and fight this horde now. There's a new threat, like something like that, that would just be where cool. the walkers are a part of the conflict yeah. rather than 
just in the background and you get a random scene of a walker once in a while that yeah. doesn't really relate to anything else. That or you need to have the characters constantly acting in a way <clears throat> as if the threat of the walkers is forever looming. Sure. Yeah. You sure. can't be complacent. You can't be too loud. You, there are all these strict rules that you still have to follow because they might mm. be around. And that's where you create like a chilling atmosphere throughout your whole show. Even if yeah. it's not meant to be horror, uh, like a horror show or even much of a thriller at times, mm. I think there's still at every point should be, oh, no, no, we can't go down that uh, alleyway just in case, you know? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Imagine if there's like an ambush set up for the saviors and they're about to set it off, but then they hear there's like a walker herd just approaching and they know that if they set that off, they're going to come and attack them as well. So it's like, oh, now we can't that do it. That would be like, cool. I don't know. All sorts of things. Well, like even a random kind of uh, idea I had for just one particular scene. We've often talked about how you make a sound and they all turn around and they get start to get up and all of this. Wouldn't it be great if you just had one lumbering walker? So you've got your group that's like trying to navigate quietly around and there's all these walkers around, but they're just kind of minding their own business. And then up above, you have by some pure fluke of a chance, a walker come along and just like a marion pippin type thing where he like nudges <laughs> a bucket accidentally that falls and then they all turn around and now the stakes are really yeah. high because like <laughs> they're all alerted and it wasn't even because something they did again it's just the general threat of the yeah, walkers sure their clumsy nature and now because of that it's gotten us into something mm. so it's like there's all these ideas that you can play with just by having yeah. them in the background like you like totally. they don't have to be front and center but just because they're around, that's the way we live our lives yeah. in this show. Mm. Hopefully, like we'll it. get a bit of that in Daryl Dixon with variants if we're lucky. Mm. How, yeah, how yeah, the, that, that's a whole thing. Mm. That's going to be sorry. Oh, how do they sound in France? The walk of rather than like, oh, like weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, if we get like the the running sort of walk, it's like we did at the end of World Beyond then that would sort of add a little bit of a threat. You'd have to watch what you're doing a little bit more. So hopefully we'll get yeah. a bit of that. Yeah, that'll be cool. That mm. That's definitely a thing that's exciting about this mm. show. Mm. All right. Yeah, all right. Cool, cool. Turnsounds at gmail.com. All your questions and suggestions. Excellent. This has been fun, boys. <laughs> it has been good. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook, I believe. Yeah, sure. We right. have we have social media. We're also releasing TikTok. Is yeah, that true? That's a, it, uh, it's a it's, it's, <laughs> work in plug, progress. Isaac. All right, yeah. So at the moment, uh, I'm waiting just so you know. I'm making okay. a whole bunch of clips because the algorithm says you got to post like one to four times a day if you want to like <laughs> actually. <laughs> wow, like, that's crazy. One every four hours or something. So I'm really going to try and get into it. But yeah, I'm trying to make a bunch of backfill content first gotcha. so I can like give myself a bit of a break when the time comes. But yeah, it'll be Turn Sounds Podcast. I like I it. I don't know if they even use like at symbols or whatever, but yeah, on TikTok, <laughs> Turn Sounds Podcast. Tick. Social media, basically, ladies and gentlemen. Follow us on social media. Reach out to us. We would love to chat with you. For sure. Yeah, Definitely. questions and suggestions, conversations, hit us. Mm. All for it. Until mm. then. I have been Liam, your host for this evening. Very well done. Mm. Uh, I've been Ben. And I'm still Isaac. Ladies and gentlemen, just keep walking. Dead city. <laughs> <laughs> to France. <laughs>